All right, guys, PW here, and this is Cheap HDMI Cables and What Happens Part 2. If you haven't caught the first video or Part 1, make sure to check that out as we took a look at a video game I was playing in 4K high dynamic range, and it was cutting in and out using a cheap HDMI cable. Unfortunately, the video uh, I was taking cut short, and I wasn't able to show you the actual cable I was using and make a comparison between some of the more expensive HDMI cables, so I'm going to do that for you in this video. Let's first take a look at what HDMI cable I was using with the gaming console previous uh, in the last video. That was causing the screen to flicker, cut in and out, and us to lose some color bit depth and whatnot, and uh, causing a few discrepancies. Uh, so it was this generic HDMI cable. Uh, and my suspicions were correct in trying to use this one. I've never had any problems with it before. I was just using it for the time to kind of test it, and I was uh, hoping to do um, you know, a comprehensive video on this so, so that we could uh, take a look at some of the cheaper HDMI cables and what happens. So this HDMI cable works perfectly. It's a generic one. I'm not going to necessarily tell you the brand of it because it's not even listed on the damn cable. You know, so what really is the difference between a cheap and expensive of HDMI cable. A lot of people will say that it either works or doesn't work. You know, works or doesn't work. It's either on or off. Uh, but I think in the first video, um, I've kind of proven that wrong in a sense of, well, it doesn't either work or doesn't work. Um, sometimes it'll work, as I've had this cable working for quite some time with no issue whatsoever. I was pushing 4K Ultra HD content through at even high dynamic range, and it was working no problem. Um, but then it started just cutting out. And I think I really need to emphasize the fact that these videos Video games, particularly that run with 4K uh, video content um, in the high dynamic range especially, are going to be pushing a ton of bandwidth and signal through those HDMI cables. So when it comes to those 19 wires in the HDMI cable, as there are 19 pins and 19 separate wires that need to transfer those signals, what really makes a difference and what, uh, you know, what stands um, the two cables apart, a cheap generic HDMI cable to a more expensive cable. Um, and I'm going to kind of show you that in this video, but I want you to check out a chart really quick that we're going to take a look at. And this is concerning kind of the format we've got here, Ultra HD versus 1080p, Ultra HD 60, and the active resolution, our colors, our HDMI version, and then the HDCP, or the High Definition Copy Protection uh, mode there. So 2.2 at the bottom, we've got one down there, or up there at the top. We've got our data rate over here in this column right here. Then we've got our chart rate, our character rate, I'm sorry, chipset speed, okay, the clock, and then our bandwidth. So if you kind of take a look at this, we're going to see that the Ultra HD 61, this is kind of a generic one right here that's operating on 10, but our goal is 12-bit color. Um, we're going to need 13 gig a second, and any decent HDMI cable, specifically meant for 4K, is going to run at 18 gig a second. Now, it isn't until we get up into 10-bit color right there in 4K stuff, which we don't even have just yet, um, that none of this stuff is supported yet. So we're not going to worry about just that, but we're going to focus in on our last line right here, where we're doing HDCP 2.2, High Definition Copy Protection 2.2, which is going to be all the 4K Ultra HD stuff, uh, using the high dynamic range. We're not even maxing out at 18 gig a second, but if you get a good cable, you'll be able to do 18 gig a second, and you'll be right along that line of clocking her out. So not enough bandwidth for the cheaper HDMI cables. I reached out concerning that HDMI cable that I was using, and they sent me a little high definition kit uh, in the mail to kind of replace it and see if I can get, um, you know, well, satisfactory performance out of it again. So I'm going to be doing a video later on testing um, multiple different cables and making comparisons between them. But let's just get an overall idea of what the cheaper ones compare, you know, how they compare to the more expensive ones. But first let me just explain that there is something called distributed capac you know, capacitance. Um, in, say, a coax cable, it's the capacitance between the center conductor and the shield. The capacitance is distributed all along the length of the cable. On uh, a longer cable, more capacitance. Um, it's heavily influenced by the impedance, or really the insulating strength of the dielectric uh, material, or the material between the wire and the shield, let's say. And the, the issue here is, um, well, the strength of the original signal, more or less. And with HDMI cables, that doesn't change. Um, the bits are ones and zeros, yes. 
but uh, they have to travel closer and farther down the line. Um, and then some things can happen, like a tunation or lower voltage of the original signal due to that capacitance, and external noise injection. Uh, that's actually called return loss. Um, and it's you know got to do with things like high frequency anomalies and whatnot, but they can be minimized by manufacturing techniques and controlling that wire size and spacing and the dielectric thickness and material that they're using, like long grain copper or something else. But when we get into things like four times as many pixels, uh, frame rates at 60p, enhanced bit depth, and you know colors at 12-bit color, uh, it requires more bandwidth than your HDMI 1.4 cable could do, or uh, some of the cheaper ones. And it's not necessarily the classes that set the HDMI cable apart. Um, you know, there's cheap HDMI 2.0 cables out there that will work. However, we want consistent working here. So let's just take a look at this chart um, really quickly to give us an idea of the dynamic range of luminosity. And um, well that can kind of help you with the high dynamic range stuff. Here we want to take a look at the difference between the screen, how it's going to look with a cheap HDMI cable versus a more expensive one. And I think I've explained this before, but the audio is not going to really make a difference. you got a cheap HDMI cable, you're pretty much going to get the same audio as you do with a very expensive one. But it really comes into play on those cables when you're pushing that 4K high dynamic range stuff through, and specifically with these newer video games that are enhanced or in 4K Ultra HD, uh, and that are using the high dynamic range. Believe it or not, there's a lot of video games out now that are using HDR, um, and it can really strain that cable out. It can push it to its maximum, and that's when uh, bandwidth, so to speak, comes into play here. And, uh, well, a more expensive HDMI cable can really help you out. So let's do this test. I have just connected that black HDMI cable that we were previously looking at over here, um, and that is actually going from the PlayStation 4 game console system into my Marantz SR7010 AV receiver and then I've got a decent AudioQuest cable going from the receiver into the TV. I've never had any problems uh, with those AudioQuest cables but let's check out what happens when we use the black generic HDMI cable. That does sometimes work. Uh, pay attention to the colors on the screen, um, the resolution up, oh, well it's not not working at this point, but as you can see here, screen resolution changed by application, so we're in a 4K um, game now with high dynamic range, and it's kind of easiest for me to point this out with the colors uh, with my receiver display, or the on-screen display or graphical user interface, so I'm just going to hit info, and we're going to pay attention to the color of those input signals right there, and the active speakers, and the volume indicator right there. Um, so this video game is in high dynamic range, and I can tell you one thing right now. We're actually not getting the high dynamic range. So for some reason, um, I don't know why, this HDMI cable, the cheaper one, mind you, that's what I'm using right now, I'm testing the cheaper one out, is not giving us high dynamic range. And it's just an easy way for me to tell by hitting info on the receiver and taking a look at those colors. Um, we can get into the game right here. I don't, however, I don't think a lot of people actually want to see me play a video game. But pay attention to the colors, and let's see if we can notice any bit of difference when we swap this cheap generic black HDMI cable out with a little bit more expensive AudioQuest cable. Alright, so the colors are going to come in here shortly, and I want you to just... Try and get an idea of how these colors look, how bright, vibrant they are, the resolution and whatnot. And however, the resolution might not change, and this cable can still put through 4K high dynamic range stuff through. It really starts becoming a problem when we move around quick in the game. So if we start moving around really quick, uh, firing from the gun, that's when it can really require a ton of extra bandwidth through the cable. But I'm just taking a look at some of the colors right now and getting an idea of what they look like, how bright they are, and what some of these images look like. Now, let's try to get an idea of what happens when we replace this with the AudioQuest cable. Alright, so I've now replaced it 
replace this cheap HDMI cable, the black one, with an audio quest. I'm not going to tell you which one exactly at this point or in this video, because I'll do a bunch of comparisons later in other videos of the HDMI cables and differentiate the audio quest cable lines, you know, from whatnot. But um, let's get back into the game here and see what the cable does for us. Okay, so I can already tell, I'm going to go over kind of the same point again. I can already tell that it looks much brighter, that the colors are a little bit more vibrant. I mean, those orange flames right there are looking nice and bright. Uh, this battleship, the smoke, the sky, I can already see a bunch of differences. And I can tell you why, and I know exactly why that is, but I'm going to kind of let you figure it out for your own. Now, one last test we got to do here really quickly is with my receiver remote again, I'm going to hit info, and we're going to pay attention to those orange or yellow colors that we previously saw with the other cable. All right, so that's one thing that's going to really give it away for me. Check out that volume indicator on the lower left-hand corner there, the input signal on the left, and the active speakers on the right. That is a night and day difference to me, guys. It is a night and day difference. It's much brighter, the screen itself. Um, it really feels like I'm, I'm in Dolby Vision here versus standard, you know, standard dynamic range. Um, so there are a lot of differences with the two cables. Um, if I were to put in, say, an older monster cable, would we notice much? Well, we'll find out in later videos. I'll actually do that for you guys. Uh, one of the best tests or way for me to do this for you is to really put the video games in with high dynamic range. Uh, we can try with some movies or some Alter HD Blu-ray discs at some point, maybe even with the 3D content. But the video game is a really easy way to kind of uh, differentiate between the cables and the screen resolution and colors and whatnot uh, using that high dynamic range. Because I can assure you and tell you that this game does have the high dynamic range. It is in 4K. Um, and I haven't altered or augmented the cable that is going from the receiver into the display. So while... Surround sound receiver, you know, owners are, you know, it, it's somewhat unfortunate that you've got to buy multiple cables for your source material going into the receiver and then a cable going out of the receiver into the TV. Uh, both of them are very important. You know, the cable going from the receiver into the TV is extremely important, as well as the cable going out of the source material into the receiver. Now, the receiver is doing a lot of the work, and it often will, but once it gets to that TV, if that signal isn't above... 12 or 13 gig a second, we've got a problem for the 4K high dynamic range content. So I think that's what was really happening with this cable, um, is that it was maxing out in terms of the bandwidth that it was capable of producing on the screen. So we weren't getting a satisfactory signal sent from the PlayStation game console into the receiver, and then sending that in out into the TV on the display. Looks like with the AudioQuest cable, it's a night and day difference to me. I don't know about you guys, but I can really tell a night and day difference here with the colors. So, um, that's where this chart really comes into play. Finding the perfect HDMI cable is difficult. Knowing what to pay, uh, how it's going to perform even. Like I said, I'll do some tests and whatnot on um, some other HDMI cables. I'll go through almost every HDMI cable that I, that I own. But um, a good way, and what I'm going to do next, folks, is I'm going to plug in two HDMI cables into that receiver going out into the display, right? There are two, actually three, video outputs on that receiver. I'm going to plug in two different HDMI cables. Um, one of them, and, and i got to keep going back to the AudioQuest ones here, guys, because it's the better cables, or more or less the best ones that I own. Um, but I'd like to compare an AudioQuest cable to a monster cable. So what I will do in a later video is I'll have a monster cable leaving the receiver going into the television screen, and I'll have an AudioQuest cable leaving the receiver going into the television screen. And I'll just kind of switch the inputs on the TV for us to kind of make a, a, you know, one and two comparison of what one cable the monster looks like and what the AudioQuest cable does. So I hope this kind of pointed out for you um, what the, you know, the differs, or I'm sorry, the differences between the two cables and how they can look uh, in terms of colors. But even when we're at the PlayStation menu here and out of the game, uh, the screen to me is a little bit brighter. It's a little, you know, more blue, um, more vibrant, a little bit more unique, more dynamic, I'd have to use that word, uh, because, you know, we're out of the high dynamic range now, but 
it, it, it feels like high dynamic range versus standard dynamic range with a different cable. So I think I've proven here that um, HDMI cables don't come down to they either work or don't work. Some are better than others. Um, and you want to make sure with the 4K Ultra HD HDR content that you're getting the best picture quality you can. And I think, in my opinion, guys, uh, truly a cheaper HDMI cable can really compromise that video quality. Like I said, the audio quality is pretty much going to be the same, uh, depending on, you know, what's decoding it and what speakers you're using. But that HDMI cable is really going to send almost any audio signal through. It's the video, as we talked about, really uh, requiring that bandwidth and size. You know, so if you've got an HDMI 2.0 cable and it works, maybe try a little bit more expensive one. Uh, a lot of companies have a deal where, you know, if you don't like it or notice any difference um, or don't see any compromises or anything, send it back. So just... Do a test for yourself. You know, grab an older cable too. Don't necessarily throw the older cables out either. Um, I'm not going to throw this guy out. I'm going to keep him. You know, I'll put him in a room for DVD content or even Blu-ray content. He worked just fine. But it looks like for the 4K Ultra HD high dynamic range stuff, I'm going to stick with the AudioQuest cables, guys. So. Thank you for watching. I'm going to have a ton of stuff coming up in the future here. Uh, we got some things like I received some interesting mail from Roku. So we're going to go over some different Roku players. Uh, what's the best Roku player for surround sound? Uh, what's the best Roku player for... 4K Ultra HD stuff, believe it or not, because there are two different Roku players that deal with that. Uh, I'm going to have stuff like, I'm going to be cutting the cord, so I'm going to be taking the cable, and we're going to be zapping that out of the house. We're not going to be having cable anymore, and we're going to be going with a specific service where we kind of choose our own channels and doing some streaming stuff. So, I'll have a video on that. Um, got lots of interesting videos to come soon. If you like this video, give a thumbs up. I'll be doing more uh, in-depth, comprehensive looks at HDMI cables and whatnot, choosing some for you. Uh, but i got a lot of things to come. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it, and don't forget to subscribe, guys. Thank you, and take care.